Hello everyone, Skylar Thomas here from White Shark Video. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Going to give you a heads up. This is one of those definitive episodes where you are either going to unsubscribe from me or you're going to realize, yeah, I kind of like where this guy's head is at. So, fair warning. I've been sitting on this episode for a while. I've been hinting at it, but I haven't actually done the episode because it's going to upset a lot of people because it's contrary to what you have been taught to repeat. All right, let me set up the premise of today's video. The rest of the video will be my arguments and my evidence, but the premise is that what if we the good guys out trying to prove things that are already undeniable truths is all part of the plan? Meaning, as long as we are out chasing our tails, then we are being ineffective in the real battle. Making matters worse, what if we are actually losing our best warriors, our best players, by way of them being absorbed into that system that is set up to fail rather than actually being in the real game. I propose that the first step toward a real solution is to stop being willing participants in a false solution. Because while we are out chasing our tails trying to prove things that are already undeniable, the status quo remains the same. The powers that be continue to do what they do. Let me clarify quickly that this is different than a previous episode that I released challenging the idea that we know hardly anything about sharks. That's another one that is out there and that people like to repeat without actually thinking about it because it's absolutely untrue. We know ridiculous amounts of information about these animals, but that is part of that episode. You can go and watch that one if you want to. This episode is different. This is challenging the idea that we have to understand animals in order to save animals. So why am I doing it now? Well, I made the mistake of browsing YouTube the other day and yet another film that concludes with how we have to tag sharks in order to save sharks. And I made a sarcastic remark and someone responded with, well, what do you suggest? We have to get data in order to learn how to save these animals. And to you and anyone else who says that, Congratulations, you have repeated what you were taught to say, just like the destructively obedient robot that you have become. While thinking that you said something intelligent, you have actually demonstrated that you are incapable of thinking for yourself. Pissing one off yet? Look, these things sound great. They're very profound. You have to study sharks to save sharks. We have to collect data in order to affect policy. How can we save something that we don't understand? Have you actually stopped to think about these things? Beyond just thinking, wow, that's profound. Wow, that sounds cool. And uh, so someone who I consider a friend um, actually used to use that last one as a motto. He doesn't anymore, so hopefully we'll remain friends after this, but you cannot conserve something that you do not understand. Wow. You cannot conserve something that you don't understand. Very profound, right? But think about it. Because I was thinking about it. I'm like, that sounds cool, but what do you mean? Think of the implications of that statement. You have to understand something in order to save it. You have to study an animal in order to save it. Okay, that's another way of saying everything that we don't get around to studying, everything we don't understand, is doomed by way of us not understanding it. When I say it like that, it sounds pretty ridiculous, right? But is that not what's being implied? The idea that humans are required in order to save animals comes with, well, quite a burden of responsibility for one and quite a bit of horse shit for another. There's something like 8.5 million species today and humans have done quite a job of bringing that number down to where it is today. So there were quite a few more prior to our arrival and yet they managed to survive without humans studying them. Which brings us to the realization that the only real 
true problem facing these animals in terms of existence is us. So what should we really be studying? And it's not that awareness isn't important. There's a lot of truth to the fact that if you don't know about something, how are you going to care about it? And therefore, how are you going to take action to save something that you've learned to care about if you never learned about that animal in the first place. But creating awareness is a lot different than saying that a species survival depends on us understanding and studying it. Because it's not like we're going out there and discovering alien threats to species that we as humans can step in and solve. Every single time, every single time, it's us that's doing the killing. So what really needs to be studied? The animal that's dying or the animal that's killing them? I'm going to put it simply. Really, the only thing that we have to do is stop killing them and understand why we're killing them. Now, from there, it gets really complicated because instead of just sticking to the facts or sticking to science, you start bringing emotion and superiority into it and saying, well, we as humans have the right to kill them or we have to feed ourselves and all these other things or economics and jobs, etc., etc., etc. Trying to challenge every single one of those arguments is way too much for one episode. So can we just stick to the fact that you're claiming the problem is that we need to study those animals in order to save them. In fact, what I just said is part of the explanation of why that's not true. No matter what data we get at the end of it, we have excuses prepared to continue to behave the way that we are already behaving. As long as this episode is pissing people off and making people unsubscribe, I might as well say this right now. If you're a fisherman, fisherman, if you are a mindless robot working on a bottom trawler, sorting through the death that was once a biodiverse ecosystem on the ocean floor, and you justify that by saying, well, got to earn a living, got to stimulate the economy. If you are stimulating the economy by killing the planet, you. If you can't find better employment than sorting through death on the back of a gigantic ship that is killing the planet, you. If you are incapable of evolving and adapting and finding a different source of income than doing that. Do not call yourself the top of the food chain. Do not call yourself the most sophisticated animal or the most intelligent animal on the planet. All right, on that note, let's just jump into the next controversial topic. You're going to say, well, then what do you suggest? And I'm going to say the first thing we have to do in order to save sharks is stop the distraction of believing that studying sharks is going to save sharks. Let me put that another way. Studying sharks is a distraction from actually saving sharks. The idea is great, except that you're participating in a game that is designed for you to lose. What do I mean by that? Well, have you ever considered how ridiculous it is that the burden is on us, we the people, the citizens, the conservationists, the scientists, the activists, to prove that killing is detrimental to life. I mean, that's as ridiculous as it is, in case you didn't hear that. We have to prove that going out and raping the ocean is bad for the ocean. We have to prove that slaughtering millions of tons of animals has a negative effect on the populations of those animals. How is that possible, you say? Because corporations have more rights than individuals. In fact, they have more individual rights than individuals. That's how screwed up the system is. Corporations run our country. Corporations run the world. And it's not that it's not commendable to want to help animals and using your background in science or your desire to pursue science to also help animals. The problem is that once you get that degree and you get that job that you were pursuing, you just disappear into the ether. Many a passionate activist, many passionate animal lovers have gone the route of science in order to have a greater impact on saving the animals they love. And to those people, I say, we lost another one.
I've been accused of having this stance based solely on the fact that I am anti-academic or anti-science, and it's not true. I don't have a problem with academics or science. I have a problem with people thinking that the possession of an academic credential is the same thing as effectively using that credential, or the possession of knowledge is the same thing as effectively using that knowledge. In fact, I am currently pursuing my fourth degree in ecology. And let me tell you, what I've learned so far is only strengthening my stance on this subject. Yes, we have things like the IUCN. Yes, we have things like the Endangered Species Act. Yes, we have things like CITES. Problem is, we think that the existence of these things means we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish, or that these things are actually effective in accomplishing what they were supposed to accomplish. Let me depress you. One of the functions of the Endangered Species Act is to stop exploitive projects from taking place in the habitats where those endangered species exist. How many proposed projects that intend to go and destroy that habitat and therein destroy that species do you think were successfully stopped, even with the existence of the Endangered Species Act? Out of 98,237 projects submitted for review, 55 were stopped. Why? How is that possible? We go back to what I said earlier. Corporations have more rights than individuals do. Not only is the burden of proof on the individuals or the nonprofit organizations or the scientists to show without a doubt that what is being planned is actually going to be harmful, but the court costs fall on the individual while the corporations get to write off their court costs. Hold on, I'm not done being depressing. Out of 2,244 species on the endangered species list, how many do you think have ever made it off of it, thanks to being listed? 13. 13. Look, it's not that I'm not thankful for those 13, but stop acting like this is a working system. 2,244 and 13 have been delisted. And then you got to ask yourself, how many were delisted just because someone like Trump came along and started dismantling the Endangered Species Act because he is on the side of those corporations who want to go into those habitats and drill and search for oil or develop or mine, whatever it is that we want to do with the beautiful, naturally occurring ecosystem because our heads are up our brilliant, sophisticated asses because we worship things like fossil fuels and gold and shiny objects. But yeah, we're in charge. You don't have to take my word for it. Even a shark scientist that I don't really like is on my side on this one. It's not that other presidents were angels or he was the only environmentally unfriendly president. The point is that politics trumps, no pun intended, science. It doesn't matter what you learn as long as the powers that be get to do what they always wanted to do. On that note, what data exactly do you think is lacking in order to save these animals? I mean, come up with something. Hypothetically, just come up with one. Think about something that you think we're lacking data on. And what is the data that would be necessary in order for change to take place? Specifically looking at sharks, we have numbers like 70% of populations of species have disappeared since 1970. Pelagic sharks like blue sharks, mako sharks are hit the worst. And we have numbers on the oceanic white tip, 98%, 98% of their species gone. What's the number we're looking for here? 99%, 99.5% when the light bulb goes on and we're suddenly gonna be able to start saving animals? Scalloped hammerheads are down 70%, some figures say even more. And what did we do? when this last year the Galapagos Islands were surrounded by 200 and some Chinese fishing vessels. We stood by impotently. But yeah, data is going to save sharks. I would like to share with you a few seconds from a film I made many years ago 
about marine reserves called the wake-up call. I made this after meeting Tim Waters. What we see in the Galapagos Marine Reserve, just like most marine reserves around the world, is just um, sort of bigger countries coming in, sending their big fleets in, and just taking everything from there. And the Galapagos is like shark rich. Wait, so, let me stop you. Yeah. You said 98 it was a marine reserve. Yeah. And you shot this in 2011. 2011, yeah. So we've had that much time to properly turn this into the marine reserve that it's supposed to be and that's not happening yeah uh, yeah and that's the kind of frustrating thing about it is that when something's made like a marine reserve that's a government who makes that decision um is it so the government who also allows these outside countries to come in and take from it so that's the galapagos that's a reserve that was then and look what's still happening what's it going to take for us to enforce what we're already supposed to be enforcing no matter whether or not the law was formed based on science or based on public outrage what does any of that matter if nothing's being done let me guess we have to prove that the animals migrate away from the islands here we are back to proving undeniable truths as if migration is a new concept just because humans stopped migrating x years ago doesn't mean that migration itself stopped existing it is an undeniable part of nature for almost every animal they don't set up apartment complexes like we do and have their food delivered to them they are out moving around from location to location to complete their life cycle processes and here we are tagging animals to prove that they do that so that we can stop fishing vessels from setting up in the pathways of these fish as they migrate. I mean, there's your proof. The fishing vessels are there because the fish are there. They already know all of this. And then they go even further to use aggregation devices that will pull fish away from where they were already going to go right into death. This is what I'm talking about. It is an endless cycle of us chasing our tails, proving things that don't really need to be proven other than the bad guys saying that it needs to be proven. What if we're doing more harm than good by saying, okay, okay, we'll go out and prove it. We've already proven it this way, this way, this way, and this way, but now we have this new technology available to us. So we'll try and prove it again. Maybe this time the data will overcome corruption. Now, if change truly comes from the people, if change comes when people rise up together from outrage and say, we aren't going to stand for this anymore. Then we have yet another huge problem in this system because those people who would have otherwise been incredible assets in this battle also are pacified by believing in the game. People who start out as concerned citizens, people who would otherwise be outraged and starting movements are pacified because they hear about these programs and these pursuits and these studies that are going to solve the problem and people think oh someone's already on this oh progress is being made how many times do people actually look into the history of the issue and that we've been repeating the same cycle over and over and over so now citizens and scientists have been removed from the equation not only that but our scientists now add to the death toll of animals who certainly don't need any more death added to the pressure on their populations in their pursuit to prove that killing animals is a bad thing and as for the citizens well you think that you're doing your part because you're ordering off of the sustainable section of the menu for the love of God, we are eating lantern fish now. That's how depleted the ocean is. The fishing vessels are going deep, pulling up lantern fish, and then remarketing it as something else in restaurants. You know, look at some of the responses that we have scientifically and with technology to face the problems of just removing the ocean from the ocean. We call that fishing these days, but you're just freaking taking the ocean and ripping it out of the ocean. It's crazy how much life we pull out of the ocean. But our response is, well, 
based on this study that took 10 years of this animal that's almost completely gone, what we recommend is that you drop your hooks down to this depth and that way you can more effectively only target that animal. Or how about whales and crabs and things like I've uh, encountered here right off the coast of California. You have miles and miles and miles of crab traps tied together by ropes. So many that they actually can drag a whale to the ocean's bottom and drown it. And what's the response? Well, we're going to put signals on it. We're going to look into putting pingers on these things. Not we're going to stop calling sustainable fishing miles of crab traps. We're not going to acknowledge that these whales have been using these waterways for millennia and they're supposed to just change because we put some pingers on crab traps. That's the result of using studies and technology to fight against bullshit. Put differently, you can either be an agent of change or you can latch onto the endless supply of excuses that are being supplied to you by the industries that don't want you to change. Okay, I'm gonna have to split this into two videos. I already recorded the rest of it, but uh, it's just too long. So if you survive this one and want to watch the rest, uh, I will release part two tomorrow, which is the same day that Seaspiracy comes out. And I do talk a little bit about Seaspiracy in that one. All right, so for the few of you who are still remaining on the channel, let me tell you that uh, I need to get rid of some shirts. I'm probably going to go live in the woods somewhere or find a way to live at the bottom of the ocean. And I got to get rid of these uh, boxes of shirts that I've created. So I am doing a month long sale. Just go in and enter, what shall we call it? Uh, we'll call it harsh reality. And that'll get you 60% off of the They Go We Go shirts and the Shark Minute shirts. And that comes in youth sizes, that comes in women's cuts, that comes in men's cuts, of course. You can also still order the other designs, such as the one I'm wearing now, the Sharks Don't Kill People, I Kill People. Uh, do let me know what you thought and if you learned something or if this caused you to think in a different way or what I'm missing entirely from this topic. Thanks for tuning in.